Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. It is one of the most wonderful poses to strengthen the muscles of the lower back, but can be problematic for people who don't have a strong lower back or who, who misuse their lower back or overuse their lower back. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Traditional Cobra Pose, and there's a couple different variations, bringing the wrists underneath the elbows, Really working on the geometry will help support the back. What you'll see often is people come up, called baby cobra maybe, or push up. And now if I'm just pushing up and rounding, you see my shoulders are not over my wrists, so I'm kind of locking out my elbows. My feet might be turning out, which is really an internal rotation, or the heels might be turning in. And all of that is using um, squeezing in the back. If I just not use my core either, dumped into it more, and then I'm getting a back bend really only here in the neck. It's a hot mess. So let's come out of it. Props, wonderful way to help your body connect or help your brain connect to a piece of your body that might not be um, easily recruited and working. So I like to put the block between my feet and keep cueing you or cue your students if you're a teacher to find that block with the big toe sides of the feet. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the inner thighs, right? A really important part of the core. And once I get that connection, well, you can even see how my belly lifted up away from the floor. For people that are hypermobile, they'll dump into their lower back and they'll come up and do it and their uh, pubic bone is not on the ground. So really keeping that pubic bone connected is the movement of the pelvis forward to give you the back bend. And so you really want to finish with the shoulders over the wrist. You can really feel how this is a pose of moving into potential. And if I'm here, I'm kind of sinking, right? And the chest collapses and then that's where you get into that hyperextension of the cervical spine. So hug the block with your feet. Engage your legs and reach your legs back. For people that lower back hurts in cobra pose, you can think of it like the, the lower back is being put upon by the legs and the chest. Both of those, if I'm here and not using my legs, both are dumping into the lower back. Right? The upper body is falling into the lower back and the legs really have to be carried by the lower back. So I want to use the legs reach them out so I get more space in my lower back. And then with the correct placement of the hands, not just here and then jamming, find the geometry, find the right angle. You lift up and you finish the pose, opening up the chest, pull the collarbones apart. And then I have this amazing base that it's like, oh, I can look everywhere and not be stuck here, which feels awful. <laughs> My chest is lifting up out of my lower back. My legs are reaching back out of my lower back. And then there's nothing but spaciousness. And there's no pain in space. This is a wonderful chest opener. And then the lower version here, just find that right angle. Well, you should be able to take your hands up off the floor and the pose doesn't fall apart at all. And when you really find that, you can feel the part of your back that is working. That is the strengthening part. So baby cobra or full cobra, higher cobra, they do different things. Do them both correctly. You'll change your whole practice. Have a great day.